Hi, in this video I would like to show you a situation where I think that the analog oscilloscope is better than the digital oscilloscope. I know that the digital oscilloscope has a lot of good feature and advantage comparing with the analog. You can store the signal, you can see only one pulse, you can copy the screen to pen drive or anything else. You can measure a lot of things, it has a lot of built-in measurement, but I think that in this task, what I want to show you today, the analog oscilloscope is the better. Let's see the analog oscilloscopes in this demonstration. This is a very old one, analog oscilloscope, it's a Goldtar 40 MHz oscilloscope, and I choose this oscilloscope because my demonstration will use the oscilloscope in the XY mode. And on this oscilloscope, it very easily can be demonstrated thus that the time base is not functional in XY mode on an analog oscilloscope because especially on this oscilloscope if you want to put this oscilloscope in XY mode you must rotate the time base to the last position and here you can see XY mode. So there is no possibility to change the time base in XY mode because if you rotate this button then you will leave the XY mode. So this scope will be the first competitor in the analog oscilloscope team. That will be the second oscilloscope in this competition. It is also a 40 MHz oscilloscope made by Iwachu. It is a half step to the digital oscilloscope because it has on-screen readout, so you can't see any numbers around the volt per div or time per div button. You can see it only on the screen. And it also has an XY mode with this button. And if you want to leave the XY mode, you have to press the A button. A means the time mode. Professional oscilloscopes have two time bases, A and B. They are the dual time base oscilloscopes, but this is only a one time base oscilloscope, but it has the same letter, A. And here you can see the third analog oscilloscope. It is not really analog oscilloscope because it is based on an analog oscilloscope, but it has a built-in digital features. So it will be interesting for this experiment because with this button pressing for a long time, you can switch between the analog mode to the digital mode. And on the same screen, on the same device, we can compare the difference between an analog and a digital oscilloscope. And uh, it is also a 40 MHz oscilloscope. Here are the digital competitors in the same order as I bought them. This is my third digital oscilloscope, a well-known Regal DS1052, and it is hacked up to 100 MHz. It had a very good price, and that is the only one oscilloscope from the five presented here, which has a digital filtering and which is usable, because if you apply, for example, the calibration signal, the square wave, and if you decrease the frequency, you can produce a sine wave as it is expected. The others don't have this feature, or this feature is unusable. Let's see the second competitor, that is an Ovon oscilloscope. I bought it because it has a very nice big screen, and uh, it has a VGA connector, and because I'm in a school, it is a good uh, feature. I can connect the projector and show the picture on the wall in a big size, so everybody can see it. This is a very good hardware oscilloscope, but unfortunately its software is very poor. For example, there is no variable vertical sensitivity, so you can only set 1 volt, 2 volt, 5 volt, but nothing between these values. So if you want to compare, for example, two signals which are not the sa same amplitude, it is impossible with that oscilloscope. That is my third oscilloscope, Unity. I have a lot of Unity device, voltmeters, distance meters, clamp meters, rotation speed meter, temperature meter, I don't know, many, many. And I was interested in how the oscilloscope works. And it is the cheapest oscilloscope on this table. And I also bought this because I wanted to show to my students that there are affordable price oscilloscopes which can be used for their purposes, mostly for 
audio or uh, low speed Arduino project. I made two other videos about this oscilloscope on my YouTube channel, so you can see them if you're interested in this oscilloscope. That is my most expensive oscilloscope. It is a 4 channel, very good 200 MHz bandwidth oscilloscope and it has a built-in serial protocol analyzer so it can be very effectively used debugging SPI, I2C and serial communications but it has a disadvantage in this competition but let's see it later. And this is my lastly bought oscilloscope but basically that is the oldest one in this collection. It is more than 20 years old but it is a real Tektronix device. So it has LCD display but I like this oscilloscope for some reason. One of them is it hasn't got any fan so it is absolutely quiet no noise at all. I can leave it turned on for hours and I don't notice it even if I look at it so I like it and uh, I don't want to spoiler my video but it will be interesting this oscilloscope. And now let's see the task. So here you can see the signal source for the experiment in this video. This is an AVR microcontroller based clock. This is the microcontroller itself. And here you can see a well-known clock chip and the battery and the clock quartz. So it is able to count now the time without any external power. And if I power it on, then the microcontroller will read out the value from this chip, produce an analog clock. It can be programmed with these two buttons. You can connect this XY output to an oscilloscope and in XY mode you can see a clock on the screen. And the experiment of this video tries to show you that the analog oscilloscope in this XY mode with such a picture is much better than the digital ones. So let's see how this output looks like on the first analog oscilloscope. So here you can see the clock screen on the first analog oscilloscope. It should be set it to half volt per division in both directions, X and Y, and in XY mode you can see this clock. And as I mentioned before, if you turn the time base, then it will become normal scope mode, so you can see the signals which produce this screen on XY mode. So it is very easy to set it. You rotate the knob to XY mode, set the volt per div to, oh sorry, to half volt and with the buttons you can position it vertically and horizontally. And that's all. It's working. It's nice. I'm saying that was enough from this oscilloscope. Let's see the second analog oscilloscope, the Iwachu. Turn it on. Oh, it has a noise with a fan. That's why I don't like it so much. Now this oscilloscope is also half volt per division, but I turn on off the readout. And... It has a scale. Lightning, but maybe it is better without. And I used to set it to the middle. So this is also excellent. You can see it nicely. By the way, to protect the phosphor on the analog oscilloscope cathode ray tube, this device has a built in feature, but it is switched off now to move the picture with a little in different direction. Do not target the same position of the phosphor on the screen. But I turned it off because on the digital oscilloscope it will be an additional difficulties. So I'm saying that was enough from this Iwachi oscilloscope. It's very nice and it is really an analog signal. You can make it smaller. You can invert it for example 
and so on. Okay, let's see the third one. So, here you can see the third analog oscilloscope. According to the display, which is a cathode ray tube in this device, it is an analog oscilloscope. But it is able to produce digital picture on this cathode ray tube as a digital oscilloscope. So this competitor is a member of both group, the analog and the digital. So now it is in analog mode. You can see it's very nice picture and the time per div button you can freely rotate. And now I press this button. It means, this line means if you long press this button, it became a digital oscilloscope. And now, if you turn the time base, then you will see only a portion of the picture. And that is the problem with the digital oscilloscope, that the analog oscilloscope is able to produce a picture if you fastly move the electron beam and the phosphor has a short time when it is still lightning after it is targeted but on digital oscilloscope a pixel is on until it is really on and if you increase this time for example then you can see now we have more than one pointer of this clock and if it is very, very slow, then it is now moving. So we can't know what is the exact time now. But it is not so bad. Here you can see how it is drawing the picture. In which order? Okay. Let's turn back. We can say this is the best digital screen and now turn back to the analog. Wow, it's beautiful. Okay, now that was the analog team, and let's see the digital scopes. My first digital oscilloscope as a first competitor in this experiment. It has the smaller display, so that's because it, it is a few years old development. It has this small display, but it's very good for home purposes. And as I mentioned, this is the only one oscilloscope with, which has a very good digital filtering on both channel. Let's turn it to the XY mode. It is in the horizontal menu. It is now in time-based mode and XY mode. So now we can also play with the time button. Here you can see now 10,000 sample is a screen. Now it is 25,000, 50, 100,000, 250,000, half million, 1 million, and 1 million is the biggest because this oscilloscope has 1 megapixel memory in it. So this is not bad, but it's not comparable with the analog one. On the digital clock, you cannot read the correct time because it is so fastly changing and overwrite itself. So, and it is flickering, not only on the camera, but with my naked eyes, I also can see that it is very flickering. Okay, let's see the next digital oscilloscope. 
Here is the second competitor in the digital group. It has a big advantage comparing with the Regal that both channel has its own buttons. So it is much easier to handle. And now it is in the display menu, XY mode on. Can you see anything? Some flickering. And now I can increase the time Okay, let's move it to the middle first and set the memory to the maximum and it is not possible. It has 10 mega sample memory for both channel, but in XY mode it is only 1K. No more! Wow! Until now I didn't notice it. It is not enjoyable. I make some darkness around this oscilloscope to see something. It's very flickering and the digital clock section is unreadable. If I set the dot mode, it's a little sharper, but the brightness is better, but I can't see the full picture at the same time. Persist. One second. Now with one second persist time, it's much better, but you can see two pointer for the seconds. <laughs> and if I set it to two seconds, that you will see two, no, five <laughs> pointers. <laughs> so it's an interesting experiment. And uh, on infinite, <laughs> It will show all the possible position of the pointers. Okay, it's interesting. I forgot to test this persist mode in the regal, but it's not so important, time think. Okay, so that was the oven oscilloscope. Let's see the next one. This is my fastest booting oscilloscope. Let's see it in real time. I press the button now. can hear the fan and it's ready so it, it's very fast sometimes I use this oscilloscope because I do not want to wait for the long boot let's see how can I use it set to 500 millivolts and put it to XY mode So it's funny, this oscilloscope hasn't got a big memory, only a few tens kilobytes, I remember. So that is only one pixel here. And now I can increase. And here you can see how it uh, draws the, the numbers and the clock okay it is not usable now because it is in a vector mode let's set it to dot mode the dot mode it has is a little better the problem is the brightness because each dot is on for a very short time they don't produce a big brightness so basically it is not so bad you can see the second pointer is there any possibility to increase the brightness v bright uh-huh now it's more more bright a little okay i turn off this frequency matter it's funny because it it this frequency matter called sinometer i never heard this word uh, but i'm an electrical engineer 61 years old but here i noticed that this is the, the frequency matter so let's see some persist mode one second 
two second, five second. No, no, five pointers as on the oven. Infinite, no, the infinite produce a good brightness, but it is not readable now. Okay, that is the cheapest oscilloscope in my collection. So, I'm saying that was enough from this competitor. Let's see the next one, my most expensive Fortuner's oscilloscope. Comparing with the previous one, let's see how fast it is booting. Sorry, I used the wrong word, how slow it is booting. It's a Siglent oscilloscope, 200 MHz bandwidth, four channels. Oh, and now it is. Now, okay, let's see the clock on this Siglent oscilloscope. First of all, set the channels to half volt per division. Probe is one. It's an interesting that this oscilloscope has probe which multiplication factor is less than one and it means it has an amplifier, this type of probe. But now it's set it to one and set it to 500 millivolts, set channel two also, it is probe one again and it is also 500 millivolts now and although this is the most expensive oscilloscope in this five members team the xy mode is very restricted on this oscilloscope let's see it is on this scope in the acquire menu here you can see xy off let's put it xy on and I don't know the reason why, but the XY screen is a restricted area only. I don't know why, because it has a very nice display, anti-glare, so it is very good to see it. And we see something, okay. Let's try to move it to the center of the screen. But this picture is very ugly. And although this is the most expensive oscilloscope from my collection, it is not nice. But we have a sentence in Hungary, which somehow can be translated. Sometimes the less is more. So if you see, it is in the acquire menu and the memory depth is the full 77 mega sample for each channel. It is extremely big amount of memory, but let's decrease it. Wow! In the smallest memory and set display in dots or vectors, no problem, but this clock is very nice now, much better than the first setting was. It has very bright and clear picture. Let's see some persist. One sec. In that case we have two seconds pointer, five sec, we have five. So if I set a nanosecond, then of course only one pixel is visible, but as I increase the time, the clock will be better and better. And now let's make a hard copy. Now I'm seeing that was enough from this oscilloscope. Let's see how it should be switched off. It is like a PC has a power button, but it is not a real power switch. It is able to shut down the device. So you have to press it for a longer time. And now it is shut down.
This oscilloscope can be reachable like a web server. It's a good feature. It has a built-in Ethernet connection and uh, you can also purchase Wi-Fi adapter for the scope. And in that case, any device which has a browser and can connect to the internet or the local net, you can see the screen and make settings. It's a very good feature because I'm a Mac user and nearly all oscilloscope has Windows interface and Windows programs. And now let's see the next competitor. And now, let's see the oldest competitor in the digital team, the Tektronix TDS210. It is a 60 MHz oscilloscope with one giga sample. And as a comparison, let's uh, see its booting time. I press the button. Now, it made some internal test. This oscilloscope has the same advantage as the Ovon. Both channel has its own sensitivity and position buttons. First set it to half volt and let's see the display in XY mode. Even it is in vector mode, but the picture is excellent. It was a surprise for me when I saw it in the first time. In dot mode, it's better. And uh, time per division is no affected the screen. It's work like an analog oscilloscope. And I think that it is because this oscilloscope was designed more than 20 years before. And 20 years before, a lot of analog oscilloscopes were used. And everyone compared the new digital scope to his own older analog oscilloscope. And Tektronix produced this very nice picture in XY mode. It is fantastic. You can read the seconds in the digital part of the clock and you can read the Omskin, the abbreviation of our school. It means Újpesti Műszaki Szakközép Iskola in Hungarian. So I'm absolutely satisfied with this oscilloscope because first of all, it hasn't got any fan. It is quiet, as I mentioned earlier, very fastly boots and in XY mode it is usable. And as an interesting, it has a Centronix interface on the back so I can use my old printers to produce a hard copy or via the serial interface. I can send the picture to my computer. I found a program on the net which is able to manage this bitstream from the serial interface. So, I think that this demonstration was interesting for me absolutely. I hope most of you found this video interesting. In that case, don't shame to press the like icon, thumbs up. Or if you think my channel will be interesting in the future for you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And thank you for your watching. Have a nice day and goodbye.